Good morning, my name is Oleana Labu. I am finishing my seventh grade year at Wire to Learn Academy. Has your dog had any trouble getting on top of your bed or truck? Don't you want to help your dog? Perhaps building a set of dog stairs is what you need what you just need to learn. I did my independent project on making dog stairs for Sadie so she could get access to the second floor of her dog house. Today I'll be talking about why I chose this project, the things I learned through doing research about building dog stairs, my reflections on this project, and how I and how I will use what I learned on this project in the future as a student and in my adult life. Look at the building we're in now. It was built using power tools and a lot of wood. Building and using power tools is important to all of our daily lives. I wanted to learn how to build using tools. I chose this project so I could learn how to use different tools and make dog stairs. I want to do the same for my dog and now I have the skill to do it. During this project, I learned how to use a measuring tape. I also learned about different types of wood and also terminology that is used when woodworking. Finally, I learned about how to be safe while working and how to use hand and power tools. Now in the future, I will not have to rely on anyone if I need to use power tools to build or fix something. I learned how to use a measuring tape. Each inch is divided into 16 parts. You can also get a metric measuring tape that uses centimeters instead of inches. Measurement flashcards. I had to learn by sight what each mark on the inch is represented. When it comes to wood, there are two main types, hardwood and softwood. Hardwood is a dense and heavy wood known for its strength and durability. It comes from deciduous trees, which are those that lose their leaves in the fall like oak. Hardwood is usually expensive. Softwood, on the other hand, comes from evergreen trees that keep their needles year-round, like pine. It's used often for smaller projects that do not require strength. Softwood is pretty weak, so it is typically not used in things like furniture. A crosscut is when wood is cut against the grain. and most of the cuts we made were cross cuts. A kerf is a slat removed by a saw blade when it's cutting. When we cut our wood, we had to be sure we took into account the tear out so we would have the right size wood after we cut it. A butt joint is when two, is when two ends of wood are placed together to make a joint. Almost all of our joints in the dog stairs are butt joints. Safety point one, if you are about to cut and it feels weird, stop. Look at your body and hands and make sure you are set up well. Safety point two, make sure to know where your piece of wood will go when you lose your grip on it. Safety point three, the most injury is by a table saw called a kickback. So move your body out of that range. Safety point four, if you lose control of your wood when cutting, let go. Your safety comes first before any piece of wood. Safety point five, always protect yourself with glasses and ear protection. A hand tool is when you use your body to push the tool like a saw to cut the wood instead of using gas or electricity. A power tool is a tool that needs to be powered by gas or electricity. Here's a video of me doing my project. Oops. In this section, I will share what I would do differently if I continued this project or did it again, what I would change if I had more time in this project, and what I learned about myself through doing this project. If I have done something differently, I would like to pay more attention to the work. I would be more careful where to put the small dag house on the stairs so the opening faces the right way. If I had one day, I would paint another coat of paint on the dog's stairs. 
If I had one week, I would fix a little doghouse on the other side where it should be. If I had one year, I would start building the stairs again so I could take more pictures and videos. I learned a lot about myself. I am good at staying on task. I like the step-by-step -step process of building the stairs. I learned what I, I was not great at looking at the stairs and knowing what to be done next. I relied a lot on my learning coaches for this. I learned that if I, if I want to be a more independent learner, then I am going to need to try to figure out the things I need to do for each step of a project on my own and not have to rely on, on my LCs to do what to do next. I chose this project because I wanted to learn how to use tools. Today, I discuss tools, safety, and wood, and learning how to use a measuring tape. Learning to use tools and learning to build something are important skills. I want to pay more attention to the cuts and the joints. Using what I know now, I can appreciate everything that was built around me. Now you can go out and build dog stairs. Thank you.